Welcome to this presentation on fire safety for new and existing metro systems. My name is Marco Bettelini and I am responsible for safety and ventilation with Amber Engineering. Metro systems uh, pose very high requirements in terms of uh, fire safety. This is of course related to the very high person density in such systems. Metro systems are characterized by trends towards higher train density and increasing passenger densities. Both issues increase, of course, the requirement in terms of uh, fire safety. The facilities are designed for long life spans, characterized on one side by evolving needs, on the other side by evolving regulations. The integration of key safety elements, for example, emergency exits or uh, different ventilation systems after commissionings are very difficult and very expensive. The renovation intervals of metro systems should be as large as possible. For this reason, safety requirements must be accounted for in a very comprehensive manner from the early design stages on for preventing cost-intensive mistakes and uh, re-engineering. We see here as an example Metro Bucharest. We see in this picture the existing line uh, M4 connecting the uh, northwestern of the city with the city center. The existing line has uh, eight stations, which were built in stages between 2000 and 2000. 19. For this reason, the stations have uh, quite different safety standards. Now the requirements go towards capacity increases characterized by increasing train frequency and partial renovation of rolling stock. There is on the other side a new extension from the city center to the south of the city which will have uh, 13 new stations over a total length of 11.6 kilometer. You see here as an example, a typical example, uh, the new station George Bakovia on the life left hand side, we see a 3D model of the station. On the right hand side, we see a visualization. This is quite a quite conventional uh, station from the point of view of uh, uh, fire safety. On the other side, there are very different station layout. We are now in Barcelona, line nine, where we have very deep stations. You see here on the lower right part of the image, two lines on two level, levels, and then we see the shaft uh, with a depth uh, up to 100 meter connecting the surface with the metro systems. And this is, of course, uh, of course, a configuration which poses extremely high requirements in terms of uh, fire safety. The analysis of fire safety begins, obviously, with, with normal operation. We see here, for example, a computational model for the station Eroi Revolutiei in Bucharest. This is the kind of model we use for analyzing person fluxes in normal operation and system capacity. In this picture, you see the maximum person concentration at track level at the peak time, for example, the yellow uh, part, the yellow um, uh, component shows person concentration up to 0 0.7 uh, person per square meter, so quite, quite a large person concentration. And this represents a starting point for safety configuration. If a fire happens, then we have to manage all these persons and bring them to uh, safety. Risk assessment for existing as well as for new uh, metro system is characterized by several uh, steps. At the beginning, we have system definition and system presentation. So we need uh, to clearly define what 
condition are we analyzing. Then we go on to the identification of the relevant risks. Then we carry out a semi-quantitative ev evaluation of risks in terms of frequency and consequences. We represent them in a risk matrix. Based on this, we carry out a ranking and identification of the leading scenarios, which require further analysis. We carry out an in-depth analysis of the leading scenario. Then uh, we have to uh, think what kind of uh, uh, additional mitigating measure could be uh, required by this system. Then we revise our analysis as long as it, it is required for achieving the goals and then we can um, go to the assessment of the overall risk level. We see here an example. On the left hand side, we have a few uh, relevant scenarios starting from longer train standstill in the tunnel over to user personal incidents. And then we go on to small fire large fire scenarios with a very large number of persons and go on down to, for example, earthquakes. On the right hand side of this picture, we see a typical uh, risk matrix. On one axis, we have the frequency uh, ranging from uh, very high frequencies down to um, rare frequencies. On the horizontal axis, we have the consequences, typically in terms of number of victims. On the left hand side, marginal uh, consequences, no victims. On the right hand side of the axis, we have the scenarios with uh, very high, the catastrophic scenarios with very high number of uh, victims. Uh, you see the number here represent uh, the classification of different uh, scenarios. Uh, the evaluation of scenarios uh, goes from uh, negligible, that's the gray area character characterized by low frequency and low consequences, going up uh, to intolerable scenarios with high frequency and high risk. The analysis of the leading scenarios, which are generally the scenarios in the red range or closest to the red range, generally begins uh, with uh, uh, the analysis of the self-rescue process. You see here a typical example, uh, a flirt composition in a tunnel. We modeled in quite a detailed manner the central part of the composition. You see it here, the blue person are sitting, the red person are standing. This is the beginning of the simulation and here we see the walkway in the tunnel. Then we can start the simulation. We see how the persons move towards the exits of the train and then move on the walkway toward the emergency exits located on the left hand side of this picture. Based on this we can assess how long it takes uh, uh, for all the person in different operating conditions to reach uh, an emergency exit. Okay, here we see a more realistic example. We are in beautiful Gran Canaria. That's the station Santa Catalina, which is a quite, uh, quite a complex uh, uh, station with uh, the train uh, station in this, uh, in this part on the right hand. Right hand side, we have a bus station, we have different commercial uh, spaces. And this is, of course, uh, of course a much more complex conf configuration. And you see in this picture on the left hand side, the facilities for uh, uh, fire safety and in particular for self, uh, uh, self rescue. So we have the track range here, we have a main access, we have a secondary access and we have emergency exits. On the right hand side you see typical uh, simulations of uh, the evacuation uh, process which were carried out for um, assessing how long it takes for a full evacuation of the, of the station. 
On the other side, during uh, fire scenarios, we have to manage uh, smoke propagation. We see here an example of a ventilation uh, system. We are now in uh, Portugal, that's Metro de Porto, the new station, Manuel uh, Leao. We see here a general general layout of the of the of the station, and here we see we see uh, part uh, an extract of the of the line on the left hand side. We have the station, we have the track, we have a ventilation shaft in this particular case, and we see a typical uh, ventilation and smoke management scenario in case of a train stop between the station and the ventilation shaft. We would inject fresh air into the station, we would extract smoke uh, from the intermediate ventilation station in such a way that uh, smoke uh, is uh, uh, smoke propagates from the burning composition towards the ventilation shaft. Uh, Self-rescue towards the station can be carried out to the left hand side in this picture and uh, uh, other trains uh, on the right hand side of the shaft uh, are uh, protected uh, against smoke propagation. Then we need analyzing such, uh, such ventilation systems. We need to give a very precise look at the uh, smoke propagation. We are again in Bucharest. We see uh, here, we will see a visualization of smoke propagation within uh, the new station as they on line M4. So we see here a visualization of the station. This is the model we used for uh, computing smoke propagation. We have the, the, the track level on the center, and then we have uh, the axes on the two sides. We see here the very central location of station as view. And then we zoom a bit into uh, the computational model. That's a simplified model, of course. We just uh, reproduce the parts which are relevant for smoke propagation. We see here now the train within the station, and we are modeling a scenario with uh, where the train is burning inside the station. So that's a quite large fire, 15 megawatt, with a quick development time, 15 minutes. We see in this picture the smoke propagation inside uh, inside the station. We see here time, 206 seconds. And we see that the initial smoke propagation is uh, limited to the track range. And we see that after some time, of course, smoke is uh, beginning to reach the upper level. We see here how smoke propagation uh, is progressing to, towards in, inside, inside uh, the station. And based on this, we can, of course, uh, evaluate uh, the conditions, self-rescue conditions for um, persons. So we see, for example, here uh, the, the perspective of uh, uh, an escaping person which is trying to reach the outside of the tunnel, and we see in this case that he is able reaching the emergency exit without being trapped uh, in the fire. So this is, a, is an example where uh, ventilation is working properly and where there is enough time for carrying out uh, self-rescue. So this was uh, in very short, uh, a very short view of uh, the kind of analysis we do uh, for uh, leading fire scenarios in uh, metro systems. We analyze, of course, other scenarios depending on the specific needs, and we modify and improve uh, safety uh, condition as long as needed for achieving satisfactory uh, a satisfactory situation. Now it's time for a very quick uh, uh, conclusion. We say that fire safety is an essential requir requirement for metro systems in order to meet current and future fire safety requirements. We saw that uh, fire design shall account for current 
and uh, for uh, probable foreseeable future needs, which generally include higher train densities and increasing passenger densities. Uh, key elements of the fire safety chain are emergency exits and ventilation. These two elements are uh, very expensive if they should realize once the, the station is already in operation. And uh, it's very important a systematic safety analysis allows for proper integration of all safety requirements. So it is essential that safety requirements are accounted for in a very comprehensive manner from the early design stages on for, prevent for preventing cost intensive mistakes and uh, uh, heavy re engineering. This said, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Please uh, come to me in case of uh, uh, requirement or questions. Thank you very much.